Hello, so my capstone project is a photography editing tutorial book for beginners. Basically, photography has always been a passion of mine. However, I never got the chance to explore in depth during my studies. Thus, through this capstone project, I hope I can dig deeper into this passion of mine and have some fun. Here is my capstone proposal. So to give a summary, the topic is on creating a photography tutorial book for beginners, the type is on create and express, and the connection to the future is that I have thought about opening a photography studio as a part-time job in the future, and that my passion for photography has taught me to remain focused and live in the present, which contributed to my productivity when learning. The essential question is, how can I incorporate what I learned from research about photography into a beginner's tutorial? Here is an action plan draft. And here is a more concise timeline version of the action plan. Step one is to brainstorm ideas for my tutorial book. Step two is to finalize what to include in the tutorial. Step three is to do research and take needed photos outside. And step four is to finish the tutorial book. Step five ultimately is to make the video and PowerPoint. Now let's look at step one in detail. Basically the key phrase for the tutorial book I want to create is for beginners. Thus, step one is to brainstorm ideas to make my tutorial book unique and easy for beginners to get started on. On the right are documentation of my brainstorming part. I brainstormed on two aspects. One, how to make my tutorial book unique. And two, how to make my tutorial book good for beginners. Some ideas I have thought of include give tips here and there throughout the book. And to include some photo editing tools like Photoshop. To gain more ideas of what I can put in my tutorial book, I looked into online resources regarding tutorials for beginners and PowerPoints on the rules in photography and borrowed books from the Richmond Public Library. A lot of the resources I got access to gave concepts and pieces of information first, followed by examples. They also provided guidance on how to take photos of specific themes. It made me realize that my brainstorm at the beginning was really incomplete. Thus, I took mental notes of some ideas to be included later on. As for my reflection for step one, I realized that my idea of creating a tutorial book for photography is too ambitious as the books I borrowed from the library on beginner's photography had nearly a thousand pages. So to problem solve, I came up with an idea of focusing my tutorial book entirely on editing photos. Here is a summary of my progress in step one. Firstly, I narrowed down the essential and inquiry question to how can I incorporate what I learned from research about editing photos into a beginner's photography tutorial. Secondly, I now have a vague format of the contents I want to put into my tutorial book. Moving on to step two. After doing some research and brainstorming in step one, I wanted to finalize what to include in my tutorial in step two. As for research, to choose themes to include in my tutorial book, I polled 20 of my friends who don't do photography on themes they may be interested in learning. Then I proceeded with the top three voted ideas. Furthermore, I looked into websites about Photoshop and Lightroom tutorials, comparisons, and respective program and mobile versions. After comparing Lightroom with Photoshop, I drew the conclusion to proceed with a Lightroom tutorial for three reasons. Firstly, the functions are only focused on photography in Lightroom. Secondly, Lightroom is clearer to navigate. And for the last reason, the essential function in Lightroom Mobile is free, thus it is easy for beginners to gain access. Here are the progress I made in step two. Firstly, I polled and concluded on the top three theme sections to include in my tutorial. Secondly, I made the decision to proceed with Lightroom. And lastly, I finally have a final format for my tutorial book. In step 3, I conducted a lot of research on Lightroom so I could become familiar with the app to output easy to understand information for beginners. At the same time, I went outdoors to collect photos on people, reflections, and the four seasons. Here is some documentation for the photos I took outside. On to more about research, so basically, I have very limited experience with editing photos before this project. I usually just find a filter and add it to my photo. So as I am unfamiliar, I spent hours reading Lightroom tutorials during this phase of my capstone project. 
And while I was digesting the information, I used photos of my own to experiment. And I included my experiments in my tutorial book to help the readers better grasp knowledge. Here are more documentation of the research I have conducted on Lightroom and my own experiments with it. On to reflection for step 3. So while I was trying to digest the research I did on Lightroom, I picked up a lot of knowledge. It really made me realize that by trying to teach others, oneself learn efficiently too, as one needs to really master concepts to simplify it for others. So moving on, I realized that another challenge I want to deal with in my tutorial is to teach my audience what functions to use in Lightroom when dealing with different photos. I want to teach them to be flexible. The solution that I ultimately decided on is that in addition to me just showing the process of editing my photos, I may as well explain why I did what I did, so to analyze it and explain it to the audience. What progress have I made in step 3? To summarize, in this step, I researched and gained knowledge as well as experience with Lightroom. I gathered photo materials needed, and I made the decisions to provide analytical aspects in my case studies. Now, moving on to step 4. So after I did my research and got all the photo materials I needed, I began to assemble and finish my tutorial book. Next, an overview of my book will be provided here. It is important to note that I won't cover everything because I have around 90 pages in total for my books, so I will try to get through the structure and the key parts. Here is a table of contents for my book. I included this page to give my readers a structure of what is going to be discussed. I have prepared an introduction, a Lightroom tutorial, a section on people, a section on reflection photography, a section on seasonal photography, and a section on home photography. Lastly, I have my conclusion. Let's begin with the introduction. So in my introduction, I talk about what is photography and how I began my experience with photography. Then I included an author's message to introduce some unique features of my book, such as you only need a phone to begin. And that there are going to be case studies included to help the audience better comprehend the materials. Lastly, I have a checklist. Number one says, have a phone ready. Number two says, download Lightroom. And number three says, bring curiosity. After my introduction, I dive straight into a Lightroom tutorial. So in this section, I explained what is Lightroom, what it does, and why it's a powerful photo editing tool. And then I went over the basic features of Lightroom, such as cropping photos, using presets, auto-correcting photos, adjusting light, color, effects, detail, and optics. I included full description and examples for these basic features in the book. However, for the sake of time, I'm only going to showcase how I formatted number 4 light in this video. The way that I explained these features is that I took a screenshot of the functions available, and then I defined each term using simple vocabulary. Next, I give visual examples of what it would look like to adjust different functions, such as exposure or contrast using one photo. Then I give a practice exercise on the next page. The yellow sticky note says to highlight the green parts in the photo to create an old photo sensation, and to make the middle parts of the photo brighter, to imitate the exposure style in the last century. And under the sticky note are the solution of how to achieve what I have just described. Now we're moving on to themed photo showcases and case studies. All the photos are taken by me this year. Chapter 2 here talks about photography on people. The QR code on the right can be scanned. It will lead to a video I made about photos I took on people. Let's watch and see what it looks like. After that, I talk about my experience taking photos of people. And I included a tip. In this chapter, the tip is to interact with the subject while taking a photo of them to make them feel comfortable. The page on the right is photo number one. In the orange box underneath the photo, I talked about where I took this photo and why I took it. And afterward, I show the original photo. 
and then I make analysis to change some things. For example, one of the analyses I made is to crop the parent off a little bit to ensure that the audience's attention is drawn to their children eating. Another analysis would be that the lemonade is orange, which would contrast well with the color cyan. Thus, I could change the blue sky and green grass into cyan in the photo to make the colors less messy and for the object lemonade to pop out. After making the analysis, I lead the audience by showing them how to make respective changes in Lightroom. And after that, I compare and contrast the original photo and the edited photo on the right. Lastly, I included a lesson tip. In this lesson, the tip is to use complementary colors when editing photos to make objects pop up. That concludes one case study. For each theme, I included four case studies. In total, there are three themes, which meant there are 12 case studies in this tutorial book. I won't go into detail, but chapter 3 is on the reflection theme and chapter 4 is on the seasonality theme. Lastly, as the bonus section, I included some photos on the things that are familiar around us. I wanted to emphasize that even if we don't go traveling somewhere else, we can always take neat and interesting photos by changing perspective. Then I have my conclusion and some concluding words. And here are all of my citation in MLA format. This marks the end of step 4 where I finished my tutorial book. In step 5, I made my PowerPoint and then a video for my capstone project. Here is a final reflection. Overall, I enjoyed the process of making my capstone project. I constantly reformed and were added new aspects to my tutorial book. For instance, I changed making a tutorial book to making an editing tutorial book for beginners, and then added the case analysis aspects. And my communication core competency aspect developed the most, as I had to intake information, digest and simplify it to make it easier to understand by the audience. I can definitely benefit from my improved communication skills in the future in my studies. Next time, if I were to redo this project, I would want to include more photos and more themes. Furthermore, I would have researched further to include a section to teach the structure and makeup of the phone camera. Even though it doesn't relate to editing photos, I can definitely allow the reader to become better at taking photos, thus conserving time with editing. Thank you for listening.